welcome everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Just want to say thank you all for coming. We got 23 participants right now who are with us. And some of you even have multiple people and family members and friends with you. One person might be logged in, but we have lots of people who are sitting in on it. So welcome everybody. Before we go over the agenda, I want to turn it first over to our chair and our founder, Dr. Ronan Fitzpatrick, who's going to introduce and open up the gathering with the bell and say a few words. So Ronan, I'll, I'll let you take it away. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Um, those of you who know how we do things in Ireland, you always start off with on cúpula fúcal. Oh, I'm not cursing or swearing. That's, that's the Irish <laughs> word. A few words, right? So here goes. I'm not great at this, but here goes. A cárge fáilte. Fáilte gudí an céad tínóle ar tlán Fitzpatrick McGill a fáilrig ar líne. Be an dair a seacht na seo cloc míle dúsnach eile ar ar dúrs. So kiba a anamatag ort agus kiba aut a wilkin ag an amsha ta ana az orm gurhani tuish jack tam kinta gomeg dira shaptan inta agin the kela and in that in 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 our own language then after that it's friends welcome welcome okay. to the first assembly of the Fitzpatrick Macilla Fadrick clan online. This weekend will be a significant milestone on our journey. So whatever your name and wherever you are at this time, I'm delighted that you have joined us. I'm certain that we will have a wonderful weekend together. I like our host's sense of expectation. He mentioned to me he was allocating me 10 minutes. But that's <laughs> <laughs> two to three minutes at most, folks. <laughs> two to three minutes. <laughs> Over the decades, we'd have many wonderful clan gatherings, and along the way, we've had had many occasional milestones. COVID, unfortunately, put a break on the international gathering we had planned for 2021, and things seemed to be going downhill. Instead, 2021 turned out to be a great year of milestones for our clan society. We introduced the constitution, and we set up a clan committee. We had our Fitzpatrick Scholar Prize and we launched our newsletter, The Emerald Dragon. Behind the scenes, others have been organizing their research and there will be more about that during the weekend. And now we have an international online get together. So it is right to acknowledge everyone who has played and will continue to play a part in that, giving freely of their time, knowledge and expertise. And especially our host, technical support and presenters involved in this an alternative to the event in Ireland. It is what they have prepared for us that will make our weekend enjoyable. And I want to say on everyone's behalf how much we appreciate their contributions. I'm certainly looking forward to it. So I invite you to sit back now and enjoy it with me. Now, that's enough for me for this time, right? <laughs> the famous bell. You can all see it, I hope, can you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We're on our way, folks. We're on our way. Back to you, Ryan. All right. Thank you, Ronan, for those very eloquent words, as right. always. And just so everyone knows, if we have any new people here who may not have attended an actual physical gathering in Ireland, the bell is significant. The bell has been used to ring in all of the gatherings that we've had in Ireland that Ronan has uh, has organized for us in the past, and he's using it now even for this, and so it has symbolic significance. So thank you, Ronan, for ringing in this first ever Zoom gathering. Just want to go over the agenda uh, very quickly, and we'll we'll cover what the ground rules are for this meeting, and we're going to talk about the speakers. Um, so very quickly, I want to make sure uh, everyone, if you could mute yourselves, this way we have no distracting sounds for our presenters today. Um, if you have questions during the program or during the, the lectures, I would ask that you would hold that because we will have time at the end to go over Q&A. So first up, we will have Mike and Kate Lancor, who will be giving their presentation titled Six Steps to Identify Your Fitzpatrick Irish Ancestors Hometown Lands. It's a six-step approach to number one, finding the critical facts you need to know about your immigrant Fitzpatrick Irish ancestors, and number two, websites or records in Ireland one can search, and three, how to pinpoint where your ancestors lived in the Emerald Isle. 
a systematic approach with the need to be flexible and sometimes spontaneous. Okay, with that said, I want to, again, thank you all. Thanks to all to our, our presenters who have put so much work into creating these, these presentations for us. And I will hand it off to Mike and Kate Lancor with their presentation, Six Steps to Identify Your Fitzpatrick Irish Ancestors Hometown Lands. Okay, uh, Peter or someone, can you tell us if yep. we're being heard? Looking good, Mike, Kate. Yep, perfect. Thank okay. you. We can hear you and, and see the okay. slides. Okay. Very good. So first of all, we'd like to uh, give a special thanks to Ryan, Peter, and Ronan and anyone else involved in inviting us to participate mm -hmm. in the Fitzpatrick Clan Zoom. We're excited, excited about that opportunity. And we're going to do our very best to get through this in 30 minutes. So our PowerPoint is called Six Steps to Pinpoint Where Your Fitzpatrick Ancestors Lived. Mm -hmm. And the reality is these steps could be used to pinpoint where any Irish immigrant ancestor lived. So we'd like to ask people, do you yearn to know where your ancestors were born or lived in Ireland that is? Do you want to visit your ancestors' hometown lands and walk in their footsteps? or look forward to connecting with long lost cousins by email, Zoom, or in person. And we've been able to do all of that, and we hope that you're interested in doing one or more of those things yourself. So our presentation is basically gonna be a case study for Kate's uh, great-great-grandfather, who was an, the immigrant Fitzpatrick on her line, William Fitzpatrick. We'll also be talking about William Fitzpatrick's spouse, Mary Waters, who was also an immigrant Irish ancestor. And this is an old family photo. And in the center of this photo are um, the two steps. of the grandsons mm -hmm. of William Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. And this would be Will his grandson William and his grandson Peter and uh, this Peter was an uncle yes. of Kate's. Mm -hmm. So step one in identifying your immigrant ancestors and, and first of all we'd like to say as all of you who've done, been doing searching and following your ancestors it's not easy. And sometimes when you do a PowerPoint, it makes it look way too easy, far easier than it actually is. Uh, so as you develop your family tree, you really need to make sure you are following your ancestors. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that because it's really easy to be following the wrong line. And to avoid doing that, you really need to compare records for each ancestor from one generation to the next. And when we say always find at least one confirming record before you move back in time, that's a critical piece. Uh, ideally, you're gonna find more than one record so you absolutely know you're going back in, back in time to the right individual. In other words, we always like to say, don't go down a rabbit hole by chasing the wrong person. And we wanna talk a little bit about going down that rabbit hole, hole. And here's a cartoon for you that says, well, I don't know why you thought genealogy would be a relaxing hobby. You're a rabbit for Pete's sake. Well, we may not be rabbits, <laughs> but if you're chasing your ancestors, especially a Fitzpatrick immigrant ancestor, you have to be really care careful because uh, the F Fitzpatricks were like rabbits when it came to having children. <laughs> and to show you that, we wanna talk, this is from John Grenham's website, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with his website. And this is a map that John has on his site, that's Fitzpatrick households in Ireland during the time period when Griffith's valuation was taken from 1847 to 1865. And if you could blow this up, and on his website you can, each of these little bubbles 
will contain, in most cases, many Fitzpatrick households. The uh, more, the deeper color the circle, the more Fitzpatrick's there were. So you can imagine that unless you know a lot about your Fitzpatrick immigrant ancestor, you do not want to be going looking for records in Ireland. There's just too many. Now, the next map, also from John Granham's website, and it cuts off a little bit in the tip of Northern Ireland, but this map is based on the households in Ireland when the 1901 census was taken. So still many, many, many Fitzpatrick households. And we just like to say, trying to search without having the necessary information for your Fitzpatrick ancestor mm -hmm. is indeed like looking for a needle in a haystack. And we'll give you an example. And I mentioned we're gonna do a case study for William Fitzpatrick, Kate's uh, great-grandfather, great mm -hmm. the immigrant. Mm -hmm. So records in the States have William Fitzpatrick born circa 1820. And I think as most of you have experienced when you're looking at records, particularly from in the United States and the 18 or 1900s and trying to compare those to records in Ireland, you have to search within a time span because the dates, and we like to say search within a five year time span. So we this is a, an example of doing a search for a William Fitzpatrick baptized in Ireland between 1850, 15 and 1825 with 1820 being the central number. And you'll see this screen shows you that you come up with a total of 54 possible William Fitzpatrick's who were born between 1815 and 1825, County Lees, Tipperary, Meath, Wicklow, Kilkenny, Derry, all over the country. And there are five other screens with the names. And most of you also know that baptism records in that time period were not plentiful. Mm -hmm. So there were probably oh, yeah. Many more. Uh, hundreds of William Fitzpatrick's born in Ireland between 1815 and 1825. And we're telling you, we wouldn't chase these people unless we knew more because we're just going down that rabbit hole. So step number two would be finding out all you can about your immigrant ancestor in the US or whatever other country they may have uh, emigrated to. And before you start searching records in Ireland in this case, uh, we recommend you do as thorough a search as you can online for records in your home country, the US, for example, you know, vital records, census records, military, immigration, cemetery. And even uh, as important, if not more important, mm -hmm. family history records, which can be treasure troves, Bibles, photos, like that photo we had earlier of William's grandsons, newspaper articles, birth and death certificates. Mm -hmm. And we always recommend people take field trips, tons of fun. And uh, our favorite field trips, mm -hmm. which some of our children think is a little <laughs> strange, is cemeteries. And I'm sure many of you have spent lots of time walking, taking field trips in cemeteries, looking for your ancestors. But not only cemeteries, historical societies, mm -hmm. libraries are great sources for records that cannot be found mm -hmm. online. Um, when it comes to family history, uh, we think some of the most valuable 
our family Bibles. And at Kate, unfortunately, we do not have the Fitzpatrick Bible, which we're certain was probably passed down to someone in the family, but it, it's no longer able to find it. I was fortunate enough to have two Bibles, family Bibles on my, Irish family Bibles on my side. And this is just a cover of the Doyle and Whalen family Bible. But I can tell you that that Bible contained all kinds of incredibly fantastic records, including baptisms, marriages, and death records, going back to the early 1800s in Ireland. So looking at key facts, you want to try and uncover in the US or where, whatever country you live in for your immigrant Irish ancestors. So some of the key things you need to know before you go looking in Irish records, what was the approximate date of birth for your immigrant ancestor? And we've mentioned before, use a range of five plus or minus years. If you can find the immigration year, that can be incredibly useful um, for this reason. If your immigrant came in after 1900 or 1901, then there's a good chance you're gonna be able to find them in an Irish 1901 or 1911 census record. Marriage year, if you, and most importantly, were your immigrant Irish ancestors married before or after they immigrated? And we'll talk more about that. And most importantly, the critical facts is what were the names of your immigrants, parents, and hopefully some of their siblings. And uh, as I'm sure many of you experienced, and we'll show you that example, many of the records uh, do not give the surname of the mother. They may just give a first name of the mother. And then uh, a critical factor is what was the family religion? So when we're looking, when we're going to be looking in Irish records, we're looking for Roman Catholic, Church of Ireland, or other Protestant sects. But we're again, we're talking about discovering these records in the US or your immigrants new home country. So what are some of the websites we use for US records? We use several of them. Family Search is a free website, excellent website. They started the whole game here in this country. We use Find a Grave and Billion Graves, which are also free. Ancestry.com, which also, if you get Ancestry.com Premium Edition, you get Newspapers.com, which are historical newspapers, and Fold 3, which are military records. My Heritage is another uh, subscription website that we use. Genealogy Bank, Bank is a second historical newspaper subscription website. And then most importantly, especially for records that just can't be found online elsewhere, you can have uh, state or county historic newspapers. And uh, we happen to have both have our ancestors born and immigrated into New York State and they have a fantastic free historic newspaper site called Old Fulton Postcards. So just, just some of the websites that you can use. Now, what we're gonna do now is just show you four of what we consider to be uh, critical records that we found, valuable records regarding William Fitzpatrick and his immigrant wife, Mary Waters, and uh, just tell you that we found many other records and it didn't just happen this easily. But eventually for William, we came across, and this was on ancestry.com, where they had a collection of Albany, New York history. 
And in here they had notes from newspapers. And this is a clipping that says, you only see the 6th, but that in Albany, New York on November 6th, 1865, right here it is, William, whoops, I'm gonna go back on that. William Fitzpatrick died age 45. Not much of an obituary, but it tells us two critical pieces of information about William. That he died on November 6th, 1865, and that he was age 45, according to this record, which would have him born circa 1820. Now, once we had that, we were able to start searching cemetery records in Albany, New York. And we knew we were looking for uh, someone for William. And if you recall, he died on the sixth, of the newspaper article of his death appeared on the 6th of November. And this is a record, and I know it's difficult to read, of William Fitzpatrick, and he was born in Ireland. He died in Albany, and he was buried on the 7th of November, 1865. And this record also says he was age 45. And this is an example of using historical societies. At the top of this, it mentions that this is a record found on the Troy Irish Genealogy Society website and volunteers have logged into their website mm -hmm. all the deaths in the old St. John Cemetery in Albany, New York. We'll talk a little bit later about that because that cemetery was, all the bodies were exhumed in the early 1900s, including Williams. Now this is Williams spouse, Mary Waters. And she lived long enough in this country so that we were able to get a death certificate. And we like to tell people, and most everyone knows that, that probably the most valuable record you're gonna find is a death certificate. And this is Mary, and she died in 1909. So Mary lived to be 44 years older than her husband, William. It says she was widowed. She was born in Ireland. Most importantly, it gives her parents' names. And it says her father was William Waters and her mother was Mary Waters. Well, it turns out, as we suspected, this is Mary's married name. So on her death certificate, it does not give her sur surname. Sometimes the married couple may have the same surname, but that was not the case. But it also lets us know that Mary is buried in St. Agnes Cemetery in Menans, New York, just outside of Albany the same cemetery that Kate's other Irish ancestors are buried in. And then we found uh, this record for Kate's great grandfather, William Fitzpatrick. And I know it's, it's difficult to read, but William Fitzpatrick enlisted in the 12th US regulars, Union Army in the Civil War in May, 1862, he enlisted for three years out of Albany, New York. But incredibly on this record, it gives his father's name, William. So if you remember when we were talking about don't go down a rabbit hole, those were all the Williams who had baptisms during that time period. We had not entered in that search a father's name for William. But now that you can enter William, it'll greatly reduce the number of possibilities. 
And the other sad thing about this, when we found this record, it says that William was discharged in consequence of disability in June of the same year. Uh, a little over a month after he enlisted, he was discharged for disability. And it says, since dead. So whoever transcribed all these records realized that William had died. Uh, an interesting thing about the US Civil War, disability could have meant anything from dysentery to uh, amputation. It's a, it was the term they used when someone was discharged with some sort of, any sort of disabilities. So that just gives you some example of some of the records we found, but they were the critical records we found for William and Mary. So the step four out of six is what records do you look for first in your ancestor's home country, in this case, Ireland. If married before emigrating, you wanna look for a marriage record first because it's going to be more recent record than a baptism or a birth record. And again, uh, hopefully you know, chances are pretty good that whatever religion uh, was carried forth in the, in the US was the religion of your ancestors back in Ireland. We know that's not always the case, but typically the case. If you know a birth date, then, and their parents' names, then search for the birth or baptism. Again, use a range. Always use a range when you're searching the Irish records. And uh, if they came into this country in 1901 or after 1901, then you can check census records before uh, their immigration year. And I'm sure all you know that the, the last census records still available are 1901 and 1911 and sporadic here and there in the country, but uncommon to find that. But can't tell you how important it is to follow siblings. If you know your immigrant ancestor, William Fitzpatrick had a brother, John, and a brother, Alexander, and a sister, Catherine, you really have four people to search in Ireland. Because if you can find his siblings, even if you don't find uh, William and you can match up parents' names, then in effect you found where William was born. So what are the websites we use to chase Irish ancestors? Some of them are the same ones, Family Search, Ancestry.com, MyHeritage, but from there down, uh, we use Roots Ireland, which is a subscription website. Irish Genealogy is a fantastic website. It's free. We use Find My Past, which has UK and Ireland. And by the way, Find My Past has lots of US records as well. That's a subscription website. And we also use Irish Newspaper Archives, another subscription website. And uh, we have get fantastic response when we contact historical societies, churches, um, and libraries in Ireland. They're always very willing to help. So this is gonna look way too easy because we had tons of records for Mary Waters and William Fitzpatrick but these are that we're gonna show you their baptism records. Okay. So this is the baptism for Kate's great, great grandmother, Mary Waters. And she was baptized March 8th, 1831. And incredibly this map, map record says her residence was Pigfoot Lane and it was our sheep Roman Catholic Parish Templemore in County Tipperary. And we've been on Pigfoot Lane sometime, several times, and it's nothing more than that. It's a little ton, tiny 
Back Alley Lane in Temple Moore, County Tipperary. Now, if you remember, her death certificate said her father was William Waters and her mother was Mary. But on the death certificate said it was Mary Waters and we later discovered that it's Mary Hogan. Now this is William's baptism record and he was baptized in the 28th of January, 1819 in RC Parish. This record is from Roots Island, Roman Catholic Parish, Tip Templemore in County Tipperary. And again, incredibly, it gives the address of his parents, Curduff, when he was baptized. And here's his father, William, and his mother was Ellen Ryan. And yes, he did have a daughter in this country that he named Ellen. Now, so step five, especially if you're able to, if you, once you're able to determine where your immigrant Irish ancestor lived, is to search the Tithe Plotment books and Griffith's valuation records. And as, as I mentioned, if you know where, and in this case, we knew where. Mary Waters and William Fitzpatrick were baptized. And we know uh, the townlands, thanks to those baptism records we just showed you. Now, this is not Kate's great grandfather, William Fitzpatrick, because he was in Albany, New York by 1850. So we still did a search to see were there any William Fitzpatrick's in uh, Templemore in 1850. And there was a William Fitzpatrick right in the little village of Templemore, which is part of the townland Kilta Lane, and he lived on Mary Street. Now we're not certain this is William's, uh, William's father, but we want to use it to show you what you can find out on Griffith's valuation. So let's take this William Fitzpatrick on Griffith's evaluation, which is part of the National Library of Ireland website. You can go on that and actually find out. Here's William Fitzpatrick. This pinpoints where he is on an accompanying map. And it says he had a house, office, and yard. And I'm sure most of you know that often an office was some sort of a farm building, a barn, an outhouse. This was for tax purposes and they designated if you had buildings other than your house. Once you do that, you can print out a modern day or historic maps. And we're gonna show you uh, how you can do that. On, right on Griffith's valuation, you can uh, print out historic maps, and you can then use Google search or Google maps to produce a modern day map. And uh, we like to tell people that we're working with, if you can do this, then you can find yourself on a magical journey indeed, because you're be, gonna be able to literally walk in the footsteps of your Irish ancestor. And this is just an example. Um, William Fitzpatrick, when he was born, his parents lived in the townland Curraduff. And actually, this is an historic map. And if you blow it, blow it up, you can get more detail. But I'm kind of running this pointer to show you that what I just went around is townland Curraduff. And this is another fantastic website, www.townlands.ie. It's free. You can put any townland in Ireland into this website. If you know the civil parish or the county, you can zero right in on that. And here's a modern day map that shows you, and you can blow this up, 
This is Townland Curridoff, and this is Templemore. Mary Waters, family lived in Templemore when she was baptized. William lived here. And we'd like to show you this because often, often, we can't tell you that Mary and William knew one another in Ireland, but we're pretty certain they did. They were baptized in the same Catholic church. She was a bit younger than him, but their parents' families, it seems inevitable that they knew one another. So we've tried to put together six steps designed to provide a pathway back in time so you can determine where your immigrant ancestors lived. And again, we'll just say that at first glance, it may seem like an easy task, but it really is. It takes lots of persistence and patience and a lot of genealogy sleuthing, as we call it. Um, do want to talk just a hair more about Mary and William. This is the gravestone for Mary Fitzpatrick, who died May 26, 1909. This is where our journey began. With I had a memory from my childhood that we used to put flowers on a grave over in a certain period, this certain area of St. Agnes Cemetery. So Mike and I were walking to see if I could find what gravesite it was. And then we stumbled onto Mary Fitzpatrick. Yeah, which was uh, amazing. And when we saw this, it's like Mary Fitzpatrick. And we knew the date she had died. It mm -hmm. was like, mm -hmm. we, we didn't know she was buried here in St. Agnes. Mm -hmm. So um, this cemetery has plot cards. And Mary's, Mary's little gravestone was right down in front of the main stone. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing on it was the name Fleming. Well, it turns out Mary and William had a daughter, Sarah, who married a Christopher Fleming. Her name was not on that stone. And we mentioned earlier that William Fitzpatrick, and it turns out his son, Edward, who died at age nine. He was drowned. Edward drowned. Mm -hmm. They were buried together in the old St. John Cemetery. And when they... Uh, closed the cemetery and exhumed all the remains, someone in the family moved William and Edward into this grave site. Mm -hmm. And they're on the plot card. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, Kate and I had, had the stone engraved. William Fitzpatrick, Civil War, 12th U.S. Regulars, 1820 to 1865. His son Edward died in 1870 and his daughter, Sarah, was born in 1863, two years before William died. And she died in 1915. We're gonna skip a couple of these. This is a, this is a photo we took in Ballydern County, Waterford. And what a beautiful rainbow. And this happens to be the hometown land for Kate's Regan and Harney ancestors. We've been talking to you about the Fitzpatrick's, but she's got I was Regan's the, and Harney's. I was the third generation in my family trying to find where the Harney's and the Regan's lived in Ireland and no one else was able to find them, but through all this for years, um, plugging along, we found the road that they had lived on, and when we found it, it was this day of this gigantic rainbow. It was a huge downpour, and we got to the land, to the actual land, the rainbow popped out. It's miraculous. Yeah. So in this case, the pot of gold was the hometown land yes. for Kate's Harney and Regan ancestors, who yeah. came from the same town land. Finding your ancestors is so incredibly emotional. And this is us, old friends genealogy. And uh, happy, happy searching. And it just turns out we write uh, regularly for Irish Central. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with that. And yesterday morning, we never quite know when our articles <laughs> are going to run. And yesterday morning, before we got 
uh, hooked up with Peter, uh, one of our articles, which is basically what we're talking about today, appeared in yesterday's morning, October 14th edition of Iris Central. So that is it from us, Peter. I don't know what? if we, do we, oh, we stop the share. Here we go. I'm going to stop the share. It was very well done. Let's give a round of applause for Kate and Mike Lankor. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing your wonderful story. I, I would like to point out that, Kate, you're from the Albany area where I'm sitting right now. I, I live in the <laughs> Albany area, and we have um, even some members of the Deer Park line buried. Um, I don't think it's St. Agnes. I think it's um, it's one of the other cemeteries. I've actually taken pictures for William um, oh. to send him. Yeah, so hopefully you get to meet oh. one of them. Yeah, soon I there's 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 long Fitzpatrick history in this area. It's it's phenomenal. I'm not I'm not from this area myself. Um, I'm actually from Long Island. But I I also want to point out to all of our listeners, you mentioned townlands.ie. We have that website linked on our clan society website. So we have a list of maps. If you guys if anyone wants to go to our website, it's I'm always gonna promote it. I'm the webmaster, so I'll always promote www.fitzpatricksociety.com. And if you go to our maps, which is backslash maps, you'll find the link for it. We have townlands.ie. We also have loganum.ie um, and a number of other websites, which home genealogists will find very useful. So please take advantage of the links that we have here. Hopefully they help you greatly in your search. Um, let's open it now for questions and answers for Mike. I'll be monitoring the chat. Um, and I think what I'll do is I will look at the questions that we have. And um, if you want, remember how Peter mentioned, if you want to raise your hand, you can use the chat features to raise your hand. But if you have a chat question, you can enter it. Um, and I'll, I'll read it out loud. Um, if anyone has any questions for Kate and Mike. Okay, we got two hands up there. Okay, all right. So we have Karen Fitzpatrick Hall. Hi, Karen, you want to go first? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Hi, Karen. super. It's not, it's not really a question, but I'm an Albany Fitzpatrick person too. So no hello. Kidding. Uh, my John Fitzpatrick came to Waterville and went to Waterville Arsenal. And of course, from what I have so far in the family ties, they're buried at St. Agnes also. And also I have some distant aunts and uncles that are buried at St. Patrick's. Um, I have found one thing to add to what you said, if there are any Albany researchers <clears throat> and even elsewhere at any of the Catholic churches, there's a Mr. Hanlon there yeah. that does the church records for the Albany and Troy area. And boy, I have a stack of all the Fitzpatricks and the Mullins of all the baptism and marriage and death records that he actually has digitized on his computer. He has a wealth of information. Um, I just wanted to add that to that. And you can go to any Catholic church and they may not want you to publicize it, but they'll look for your specific ancestor. The does other thing have, too. Does he, that, does he have that on, does he have a website? You said he has a digital. No. No, okay. it's, remember, it's a Catholic church. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to market it out. But what if you go there, and we always give a small donation, he'll yeah. print off the records that he oh, has wonderful. digitized on his computers. I actually have some that I have posted on my personal page and also my clan's page. But um, the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is if a person's done a DNA, don't forget that there is a Fitzpatrick Jed Match project that a person can join. And also, I'm trying so hard to get people to join Relative Finder. But in order to do that, one must have their tree on Family Search oh. to be able to do the Relative Finder thing. And it's an awesome site. Again, it is just a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a guide. You can't take it as concrete evidence, but it's a guide that you can use and then follow up with your documentation and research. I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good input, Karen. 
we've got a couple more questions here. Um, we have one from uh, world famous forensic genealogist, Dr. Colleen Fitzpatrick, who's also the founder of our DNA study. Colleen, you can wow. take it away. Um, I just wanted to, to say that um, I wanted to add a couple of really unusual uh, resources that came my way over the last 40 or 50 years that I will tell you about in five minutes. I will save you 49 years, uh, 364 days, 23 hours, and 55 minutes in looking for Please. These. <laughs> um, one of them is, now this is for U.S. base Fitzes here. One of them is the Siemens Protection Certificates. These are, I think they're available online, Family History Library, or I do know they're, they were books in the old days when we had books, you know, they, to publish. They were published. And what this was, my, my great-great-grandfather who came here was a seaman. And we one day found his semen protection certificate, which was a document carried by semen to establish that they were American citizens. And this was important if you had an Irish accent because you had the potential of being impressed into the British Navy. If you couldn't prove you were an American, you could get in trouble maybe for treason even. So in this semen's protection certificate, we, we, we started our knowledge of him in about 1858 when he married my great-great-grandmother. This was 1852, maybe. Yeah. Set us back okay. six years. Philadelphia, not New Orleans. He was I'm from New Orleans. And it said his, you know, how high his brown hair, blue eyes. It had his uh, signature at the bottom. It said who mm -hmm. witnessed the certificate, the company he worked for, and so on, which is good. And then it had his signature at the bottom. Now there's 50,000 Peter Fitzpatrick's, hello, Peter, online right now. So sorry about that. We all have common names. So, um, you know, we didn't know it was him, but we matched the signature to the signature on his marriage certificate six years later. And it was a dead ringer. That was him. So the other thing, so semen protection certificates, look those up. There are other Fitzpatrick's out there. And then that had them. And the other one, which is even better, is at the Family Search Library, Family History Library, FamilySearch.org, there are hospital records for all the major cities in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I became interested in the charity hospital records for New Orleans, obvious reasons. So I took a couple of years uh, where in my spare time, I transcribed the 1851 hospital admission records for the charity hospital. This was free medical care. The Irish couldn't afford paid care. So I figured that when they got sick, everybody would go to the free hospital, which I was right. So there were 12,250 names I transcribed over a two year period. There were people writing me from New Zealand saying they found their ancestors in there because when you died in the hospital, sometimes you didn't get a death certificate. So that was your last appearance on earth to die and be recorded that you died in the hospital. Yeah. So that being said, when you have, when you uh, go to the family history library, search on medical records, hospital records, doctor, midwife, physician, and you're going to come up with over 2000 hits in Ireland, the UK, the United States. Now, in my case, because I was researching Fitzpatrick's and I had, you know, a little mini library at the family history center here. I went every year for the 1850s. Now I did 1851 because I figured that'd be a lot of famine immigrants coming in about that time. And I could cross check that with the 1850 census and the 1850 city directory and some of the mm -hmm. immigration records. So it made a little cluster of really nice uh, cross reference research uh, resources. So I went through and I have transcribed for our New Orleans website, all the Fitzpatrick's, all the Fitz names for 1850 to 1860. So that being said, while I was doing that, I found my great, great grandpa in this, in the, in this, uh, it's like a d big double page where the, the patients would be written in chronologically per day. So it would have the, the day, if somebody died, the, the, the date of admission was at the top. Then the first column would be the date of death if they died, the date of release, the ward, the name, the, the place from, the age, marital status, 
where they were before they were in New Orleans, how long they had been in town. Some people for half an hour, you know, who had been brought yeah. to town for an accident. Uh, when, how, when they were sick, how long they had been sick and the hour they checked into the hospital, sometimes with a little note in the last column about, you know, something interesting, a baby got picked up by its mother or somebody got hit by a car and was found in the street, you know, something like that. So I found my great, great grandpa uh, checked in the hospital. I think it was April 1854. It said he was a widower. Oh, he was married once before. And it gave County Louth his age. You couldn't miss him. It was him. And the only other place I ever found that most of that same information was in his obituary 50 years later. So that confirmed, you know, that yeah. what I what I thought I already knew. But it gave me more. He was already widowed by then. I knew he was married once before, et cetera. But that gave me a little bit of a timeline. It also told me before he got there, he had been in New York. And he had arrived in New York in 1849. And he had been in New York for seven years before he came to New Orleans, where he was. So it gave me somewhere else, you know, the previous. And with the yeah. Siemens Protection yeah. Certificate, I'm getting a timeline. So I want to suggest that you 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 ask Base Fitzpatrick's that you look at even Albany may have this I don't know but yeah. Chicago uh, New York Philadelphia uh, what is it South Carolina um, you know um, Virginia not Virginia so much because of the Civil War but New Orleans maybe Mobile all if I said Chicago all the Boston unbelievable you know they are very similar they use the same some of them use the same books they have the you know uh, uh, like uh hospital records for alcoholics you know that would go in hospital records for women of ill repute that would check in they had hospital records for in the insane asylum you know they have all and this is such a very rich source of genealogical information and it's almost never used it's never brought up it's never really recognized for what it is. Some of those are indexed, some you have to page through, but even if you page through, they are totally fascinating. You know, why people were sent to the hospital. Some women had postpartum depression and they were committed to the insane asylum. You know, I don't have any kids, but I get it, okay? So. Thank, thank you very much for those two resources. Yes, we'll, check we'll, them out, we'll, guys. Yes. Okay. Thank um, you. In, in just a few minutes, we're going to take a break, but I want to just get some more hands up and some questions. We are joined by Michael from the Clans and Dynasties uh, YouTube channel. Michael, well, would you like to ask your question? Yeah, I was just really, as a native here uh, within Northern Ireland, um, a Doyle actually, um, I wanted to say, ask a question. What is your experience of reaching out to cousins, distant cousins of Fitzpatrick's uh, and uh, if you've reached out to any at all, um, you know, for anyone else who may be thinking that that's a decent route to go down, uh, maybe, you know, long lost relatives that may have more information. Uh, we, we have visited long lost cousins in Ireland mm -hmm. for Kate's mm -hmm. Harney and Regan ancestors, yes. yeah. my Kennedy and Laid ancestors, mm -hmm. But we have not, I hate to tell you this, but we have not actually connected with any long lost it's cousins Patrick's. on Fitzpatrick. We've, and others, Kate's connected with her McDermott yeah. uh, long cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, we just connected recently with a long lost cousin here in the United States for Kate's Fitzpatrick line. And we're excited about that mm -hmm. because we think she has some additional information. Mm -hmm. And that may help us connect with someone in still in Ireland. Okay. I'd like, can I, can I make a comment? Uh, for, I'd like to say for the first time in 20 years, I found somebody in Ireland in County Louth that was willing to take a DNA test. It took me 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. Connecting with the homeland is very important. Real quickly. We have just two comments from Martin Costello, who joins us from Kilkenny. He says, um, just to note on townlands.ie, the site doesn't use spelling variants for townlands, so the spelling has to be accurate and precise. If you can't find the, the townlands, try looking under the county and then look through the list of townlands. And he also says, uh, www.swilson.info 
.ind or index.php is a fabulous site with lots of resources of uh, different counties. That's also on our clan site. Uh, so okay, well, that. we okay. have not checked that out before. We'll yeah. definitely do that. It. It's good. It's good. Okay. And I also wanted, I saw that, Steve, you had your hand up earlier. Did you yeah. want to ask a question? He's uh, had a couple quick ones. Uh, uh, expanding on uh, the Townlands IE site, they have a, a caveat in there that it's, it's constantly under development. So if you don't find what you want, uh, you know, now you might check in a couple months. Uh, they may also change the spelling. The, the second thing is I want to uh, give some kudos to Colleen, because if you are Fitzpatrick looking in, uh, for, in New Orleans, she has done a, a masterful and monumental job of organizing a lot of the records that she came in, uh, that, that she uh, came about. And uh, she uh, kindly gave them to the, uh, the collection of Fitzpatrick research, yeah. which is a database that can also you can find on the uh, website as well. So uh, thanks a lot for that, because it's, it's thousands and thousands of records. Yeah, phenomenal. that's fantastic. And, and they're search, searchable by, by given name and searchable by location. My wow. Goodness. Okay. Yeah, and unfortunately, my family's probably the only one that <laughs> went to New Orleans. So there's some <laughs> fits in there. I don't oh, know true. if it's generally <laughs> useful, but it was all kind of me, you know. But yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. You bet. It was a very good lecture and a really great question and answer session. So the Q&A went a little over time, which is fine. That's actually why we have the intermission buffered to 15 minutes. So if everyone wants to take, all right, is everyone okay with a five minute break? Is that okay with everyone? Let's yeah. take a five minute break. I'll see you back in five minutes. We're going to start um, Tim Fitzpatrick's presentation, the Carroll Nexus. <laughs> 